Kate is at a bank when it starts being robbed. And right here, I already knew exactly what was going on. Yeah, she's part of the gang, something that's telegraphed even further when she pulls the same crap about not knowing about guns that she did in the pilot. And yet the show still thinks this is a reveal worthy of ending an act on. She plays the victim to get the manager to open the vault, but then one of her partners gets trigger happy so she shoots them all. Non-lethally, of course, because the show is now even more hard-pressed to make her an unimpeachable hero than it is with Jack. She set the robbery up to get to a safety deposit box with the number 815, the same number as the plane. No reason for that, it's just generically deep, I guess. Kate and Sawyer have apparently completely put aside their differences as now they're happily swimming together. Hey, we've got to get the love triangle going somehow. Plus, it's nice that they can enjoy something like this after one of their own has been kidnapped and is going through God knows what. Though I do like the little detail of Kate using a seatbelt from the plane to make a backpack. MacGyver would be proud. The moment is killed when they find two bodies from the plane in the lake. What do you suppose the reason for that is, huh, Locke? Sawyer goes down to scavenge and helps Kate drag up a metal suitcase that she says is hers. Except she can't open it, so Sawyer calls her bluff and keeps it for himself. It's going to be one of those episodes, huh? The beach camp is suddenly eroding out of nowhere, a development that was forced on the producers when this really did start happening to the spot they picked for the beach camp. So they wrote in that everyone had to move down the coast. And Jack, prick that he is, takes the opportunity to again try to tell everyone to move to the caves. I think you'll find people slightly wary of entering the jungle after what happened to the pregnant girl. Thank you, at least one person actually remembers that. Unfortunately, Jack and Saeed suddenly switch personalities right the hell out of nowhere, with Saeed insisting like a jackass that nothing weird is going on, while Jack wants to find Danielle and see if her notes can tell them anything about the people who took Claire. And then they switch right back, with Saeed saying it might be best to leave her stuff untranslated. That was pointless. Shannon rather awkwardly lets us know that it's been four days since the end of the last episode. Well, that's a pretty random time jump. And Boone is keeping what he and Locke found secret for absolutely no reason that I can see. This is where these characters' complete inability to communicate really started to get annoying. There's absolutely no reason for Boone and Locke not to tell anyone else about this except that something actually might get done and the season would have to end early. Kate tries to get the case back but then moves to headbutting Sawyer when he catches her. Man, whatever's in there must be really important. And it would be on any other show. Saeed asks Shannon for help in translating Danielle's notes, which is of course the first Shannon's heard of Danielle, since these people have all decided they're not going to tell each other anything. What are you trying to do? <laughs> Pick the lock on a Halliburton. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> It's nice that there's things to laugh at when one of you has been kidnapped and is still missing. Seriously, does no one else care about that? It's like when Samoa Joe was kidnapped by ninjas. And now Locke has Boone stealing an axe from the camp. Are they not worried at all about how suspicious this looks? Why are they just not telling people about the weird metal thing in the ground? Now it's Charlie's turn to act like Jack as he just sits and refuses to help until Rose snaps him out of it. Thank you. Sawyer can't get the case open, and even dropping it out of a tree doesn't work. It also lets Kate take it back, so Sawyer has to chase her down again. Okay, this is just silly. You're telling me. Kate even refuses to listen to his offer to let her have it if she'll tell him what's inside, given that neither of them can open it anyway, instead opting to lunge at it like a baboon. When did she turn into early TNG Worf? Shannon starts helping Saeed, and you've got to love how Saeed instantly starts acting like the gay best friend in a chick flick romantic comedy when she brings up an old boyfriend. Why must you destroy your best characters like this? We got a problem. We have a problem, or... You have a problem. Damn, that's a hell of an attitude to cop just because she hasn't let you near her naughty bits yet. Kate tells him about the case, which belonged to the Marshal and contains guns and bullets. But we know just from the casual way it's revealed that this can't really be the reason she wants it so much, especially with it being impossible to open. And Jack actually catches on to this, but still goes along with it because he still wants sex, damn it. Meanwhile, Sun has heard everything since they don't know she speaks English, but this will never amount to anything. 
There's no reason to be happy. Things are awful. They're not that awful. We're stranded on an island. No one's coming for us. You don't know that. Well, what I do know is something in that jungle that eats people. Just because we've not heard from it in a couple of weeks doesn't mean it won't get hungry again. And I know there's a person or people that are trying to hurt us. Charlie. And Nobody blames you. No, don't stop him. He was making some good points there. Great, the one time I don't want Charlie to shut up and this happens. Jack and Kate dig up the marshal to get the key, and Kate pretends to be scared of the maggots in his wallet so she can get away from Jack before she opens the case. Except Jack sees right through it and takes the key himself. Jack, I... Don't. Damn, when did he get awesome all of a sudden? Though it's still not nearly enough to make up for everything else. Shannon has trouble making sense of the notes until Saeed gets frustrated and calls the whole thing a mistake. Did you miss the part where Danielle was completely off her rocker? Who says her notes have to make any sense? And why is the episode persisting in trying to ruin him for me? Okay, A, I told you that my French sucks. And B, this isn't my nonsense, okay? Do you ever think that after 16 years on Mystery Frickin' Island, your friend might not be quite adjusted? Yeah, what she said. Jack gets the case by threatening to cut off the medication for Sawyer's arm wound. It would be pretty cool, except that he's once again rolling over for Kate for no apparent reason besides wanting to jump her bones. You know what I said before about him becoming awesome? Forget that. And you can't even argue he's just doing it to get the guns for himself because he goes right to Kate and invites her to be with him when he opens it. It turns out Kate was telling the truth about the guns, and there's also an envelope containing what she was really after. Okay, what is it? Come on, impress me here. What could possibly be so important that she simultaneously can't talk about it and can't stop talking about it? Ah, I see. Uh, excuse me for a second. Oh, God damn it! Okay, that's done, and by now Jack has really had enough of this shit and demands to know what the hell was so important about a freaking toy airplane. Kate says it belongs to the man she loved, who she also killed. Except we'll later see not so much because she's one of our main heroes and can't be anything less than absolutely pure and innocent. Rose says a prayer while holding Charlie. whoop de frigging do and Shannon has figured out the notes thanks to a kid she knew in France who kept watching Finding Nemo. They're the lyrics to the song La Mer, known in English as Beyond the Sea. Nice to know that all that was for absolutely nothing. And this makes Boone angry for some reason. It won't make much more sense when we find out why. Finally, Kate just gazes at her meaningless airplane to piss us off even more. My score for whatever the case may be is 1 out of 10. I may seem to have been going pretty easy on these scores for the most part, which is because my problems with most of the episodes so far have more to do with how later episodes fail to capitalize on what they set up. But this one is just pure crap from beginning to end. The show had a few problems before with characters not sharing information, but here's where it really starts to take over. Literally, the entire story is based on people not communicating, and if just one of them acted like a normal human being, the whole episode would fall apart. The reveal of the airplane was infuriating at the time and even more so now. It destroys any hope Kate still had of becoming likable, and while it lets Jack look pretty good by comparison, he's still way too hung up on Kate for this to redeem him. Plus, the way that hardly anyone seems concerned about Claire is just baffling. And it'll get even worse from here with no attempts at all made to find her until she comes back on her own. I know they don't have much to go on, but just lounging around the beach like nothing is wrong isn't exactly the right way to handle things either. Eventually the whole show would sink to this level, but thankfully that day is still a while off.